Today we are delving into the features of the Fractal Toolkit Asset Pack, designed to supercharge your Unreal Engine projects with its unique style. Whether you are crafting structures, strongholds, dungeons or surreal landscapes, this toolkit will help you to expand your creative options. The Fractal Toolkit includes seven example scenes that provide a glimpse into the vast possibilities it offers. You can consider these scenes as the starting point, sparking inspiration for your own projects. What you are seeing here is just the beginning of the many possibilities this toolkit brings to the table. Now I'm gonna walk you through the features of the pack. First, the models themselves. Alright, so right now we have teleported into the showcase level for the models. So we have 44 fractal based generated models and uh, I grouped them into different kind of themes. So over here we have those set of fractals that were generated out of the same fractal formula and yet as you can see they are quite distinct from each other quite different and unique and yet they are sharing this underlying similar kind of style and I have used them a lot for building uh, structures kind of the strongholds temples or however you call them um, yeah so that's that and over here we have more of uh, organic stuff so we have those trippy mushrooms and as you can see the detail is quite stunning and uh, trees kind of a organic pillar or something maybe a root structure I've used this model to lay down a kind of a root system next to those trees right now we see the models with just this simple rock material applied but as you have saw before on those examples when we apply different materials or blend different kind of materials together now the shape is coming a little bit more saturated a little bit more pronounced yeah more trees cool a question mark hello <laughs> a lot of question marks over here next we have those purely abstract shapes and yet they are still fractals even though they doesn't resemble those you know traditional fractal shapes question mark exclamation point <laughs> really awesome model and next we have those spirally forms and they are really nice in combination with a spline deform blueprint and I'll show you the blueprints and what you can do with them and what you can achieve with them in just a second. Here are the what we could call a traditional recognizable fractals per se, which are really interesting. Let's move on to those shapes which are more modular in nature so for example if we turn on snapping we can easily lay a tile floors or walls or bridges or something we have also a stair so the pivot point is located in a way that we can easily create a spiral staircases like that and over here we have this <laughs> I made those models a little bit bigger because 
I was thinking about them in terms of kind of distant mountains, structures, shapes. But this is just what comes to my mind. And those things could be anything. Could be kind of the mushroomy structures that grows from the ground. Could be anything. If you are worried about the performance of the models, I would say um, I haven't encountered any problems with them. They are nanite meshes, so we have from about 5 averaging to 40 um, K triangles up to the maybe about 100 triangles. It's quite a lot, but as I said, the nanite is handling it really, really good. So I haven't noticed that much any drops in FPS when using you know dozens and maybe even hundreds of them so that's that all right so this concludes this section and now let's go and see the materials in action the soul of the fractal toolkit lies in its material library with 43 abstract and fractal based materials there are many creative possibilities at hand the master material supports both traditional UV tiling and triplanar mapping, ensuring seamless compatibility with your own texture sets. Additionally, the material instances offer extensive adjustability, giving you a lot of control over the final aesthetics of your scenes. Each fractal comes equipped with its own normal map, optional ambient occlusion map, and an RGA mask. This mask allows for the seamless blending of two materials based on curvature, as well as offering an adjustable dirt pass. The master material also includes an automatic angle-based dust mask, perfect for adding layers like moss, snow, sand, rust, or lava. Additionally, the pack offers a material layer blend setup already in place, in case you would like to take advantage of vertex painted additional material layers. Now let's head back to the editor. Okay, this is the material showcase level that is included in the pack and I would like to show you how easily we can apply different materials to any fractal mesh. So, if we open up the meshes folder and choose our model and then uh, let's say we are interested in this material then open up the details panel to look up for the name of the material so this is a fractal pattern O2 the material instance is custom tailored for fractal 17 which is this one and now if we head back to our model so this is a fractal number 32 so first we start to type fractal 32 and then pattern 02 and here it is so we can apply the same method to any mesh because if we open up content browser and in the material instances folder you'll see a bunch thousands, sorry uh, hundreds of different material instances so each combination of the material and different model has a corresponding material instance and i spent a few days creating them just for your convenience so please take advantage of my work and have easy time so that's one thing and another one I would like to highlight today also that you can apply those materials to any other model you like even in the absence of the UV mats so I imported this monkey head and this model has a UV map in place but in case you doesn't have it again you can take advantage of the triplanar mapping and just simply drag and drop the material but just make sure that triplanar projection is turned true. So let's apply this material 
to our monkey head. Let's go to browser and drop it. And now we have this froggy lizardly figure over here. And if we like to scale it up or down, then as you can see, the tiling is following the scale. And another thing I would like to show is the material layer setup, which allows you to paint additional material layer via the vertex paint, as you can see over here. So we have, in this example of this tree, this bark is one material, which is blend of two texture sets via this RGA mask that I showed you before. And on top of that, we have this vertex painted another layer, which is again, one material that blends two texture sets as well. And if we open up the material, we will see the material is called MLS, which stands for Material Layer Stack. And if we take a look, we'll see we have a background layer and additional layer one. And the blend asset, which is our mask, is set to material layer blend color green of the vertex colors. And all of those settings that you will see here are identical settings that you will find in material instances. So the material layers are a bit similar to material instances, although they are a different kind of beast. But I'm not gonna explain too much about material layer system in Unreal because the topic is a bit extensive. But instead I'll just show you how you can take advantage of this already existing material layer setup that is included in the pack. So let's put it into practice and let's import one of those fractal meshes. So let's go to the meshes folder. Let's try with this one. And the easiest thing and the fastest approach would be to head back to our material layers folder where you can find all of those material layer stack materials and duplicate one of them. So right click and duplicate. So let's call it MLS underscore head. And if we apply this material right away, we'll see it looks messy and it looks messy because we need to adjust the mesh specific textures for both materials. So let's expand this tab and let's type head normal and as well head RGA. So that's layer one. And for the, our background, we'll do the same thing. So head normal and head RGA, fine. And as you can see right now, the model is displaying only this paintable additional layer one. And this is because by default, each mesh in Unreal has the vertex color set to white. And white means that the red and green and blue channel is set to value one. And because our blending asset is set to color green, which is the value one, we have whole mesh covered in this additional layer. So before we start painting, just make sure that you disable Nanite if you have it on, because at this point of this recording, I'm using Unreal 5.3, it's not possible to paint directly on Nanite meshes. So just first disable it, as I did, and let's head back to Mesh Paint, and then choose Paint, and let's set the red, green, and blue, channels hit x on our keyboard to switch the paint color to black and now if we hit fill only our background layer is visible now so if we type x again to set the paint color to white and uncheck red and blue so we are painting only in green which is again the our vertex color mask now we can just happily start painting. So that's the basics of it. And that's mostly what you need to know at this point. And I'll just show you 
how you can control this material. So maybe, for example, you want to change the texture sets or adjust the material. Or, for example, you would like to not be using this RG mask that blends two texture sets and instead you would like to use just only one texture set. So let's open up our material. And if we expand material 1 and 2, we will see that over here we have a control over our texture sets applied. So let's say I would like to change the color of the pattern 1 from this indigo to let's say red, green layer which is material 2. So I would like to use only this one texture set. So let's head back to masking and uh, just tick single material on. So right now we are using just the texture sets from the material 2 over here. But if we want to use only textures from material 1, then let's type 1 over here. So 1 stands for material 1 and 0 in this case stands for material 2. So we can switch between those texture sets very easily. And let's just for the sake of demonstration just change our background layer a little bit. So, so let's go to masking again and take single material and let's say we would like to use only this one layer and it looks funny but it's just the demonstration but uh, yeah as I said all of those settings that you will see here are the exact same settings that you will find in all of the material instances so either you custom tailored your material layers to your liking or just you can simply copy all of those settings that you will find in other materials onto material layers so you have full control over those layers so that was a little bit of the lengthy explanation if you have any problems or concerns just hit me up you can write your question in the comments section or take a look at the documentation for the pack hopefully this explains how you can use the material layer setup and now let's get back to the blueprints the Fractal Toolkit features three handy blueprints 3D Array, Circular Array and Spline Deform. These blueprints not only enhance your design process but also expedite the creation of complex structures and entirely new shapes. Okay, this is the blueprints showcase level and let's take a look first at the 3D Array blueprint. So to access the blueprint, we'll open up the blueprints folder and then simply drag and drop the 3D array blueprint over here. And if we expand the details panel, we see a few settings available to us. So we can change the mesh and I like to use Fractal 21. I think the example is quite cool. So over here we can expand the number of rows. So let's say, let's type 5 by 5 and we can adjust the spacing between those arrays like that and if we type 350 by 350 in this example now we have this spacing between them and what's cool is that we can duplicate this already existing blueprint by holding alt left clicking on this arrow and moving it a little bit and let's position it in the middle like that. Now let's shrink it to 4x4 four four to match the square and let's move it on the side a little bit. And now we have control over the scale and if we scale it a little bit down on the Z, now we'll see we have this cool effect and I use this as the sailing and walls in the dungeon example level so I think it's really cool other settings are the rotation so we can rotate them in every direction 
We can change the material if you like and also we can set the collision and by default the blueprints have no collision enabled because without any collision the blueprint tends to be working a little bit faster so I would recommend to work with no collisions and if you need collisions you can just simply expand this option and choose the collision enabled. And let me show you also that we can expand the number of rows on the z-axis so let's say let's type some more and now we'll see we can very quickly and very easily create those bigger structures like that so that mostly covers the functionality of the 3d array and i could show you more examples but to keep it short and concise and have a respect for your time let's finish it off right here and next we have a circular array so if we open up the details panel again and see the options available we have a control over the number we can offset it a little bit change the radius size as well as control the angle so let's change the mesh to fractal 19 and change the material as well so let's type fractal 19 and I like to use this abstract mineral 01. Now let's change the, well first, get rid of this thing. Let's change the radius down and the number, maybe four. Let's crank up the scale, maybe five. And uh, adjust the radius again. Let's move it a little bit on the side and again we can duplicate this blueprint so let's hold alt and move it a little bit put it on place and now we can adjust the radius again increase the number and maybe reduce the scale free again increase the number or maybe four and let's do it again, so duplicate it, put it in place, change the radius again, and increase the number, put the scale down, let's type 2, again adjust it, maybe 2.5, and as you can see we have this cool effect and we can expand it some more and do some really really cool stuff with that and you can of course refine it change it play with different meshes the possibilities are almost infinite so that's the circular array and lastly we have our spline deform blueprint so over here we have a few interesting examples so let's see what we can create today with our spline deform. Let's start off by changing the mesh to fractal 16, which works really nice in this case. Let's change the forward axis to Z because it's the most useful one. Now let's rotate the whole blueprint by 90 degrees and hit G on the keyboard to access the spline points. We can move them up and let's take a look at the settings so we have just a few like selection length which adjust how many meshes are spawning on the spline so 200 is fine distance stretch will stretch them however much we need and let's play with the shape a bit let's see what we can manage to create today just a very basic simple shape and the funny setting that I like to use is the distort option which will exponentially stretch the meshes Now let's take the whole blueprint and move it on the side and what I like to do is to mirror the shape so we can first duplicate it and then right click and transform it on the Y axis in this case like that and uh, 
interesting effect is to duplicate them again and scale it a bit and maybe once again we can also adjust the spline points in all directions as well to create some more interest and we can also adjust a little bit the selection length So that already looks interesting, but what's even more interesting is to select all of them and duplicate them again and rotate them a little bit. So let's duplicate the whole thing again. Let's mirror it. So we have this craziness right now. Let's select all of them move them a little bit and maybe duplicate again just for fun and scale them some more just quite crazy right now now let's hit play and see the whole thing from the perspective of the character maybe fly a little bit closer looks quite stunning if you ask me and we spend just like two or three minutes to create this shape and you can imagine that you can expand the details more and create something even more bizarre yeah really cool stuff and just a quick note if you see the models being stretched then if you look closely um, the texture is quite all right because right now in the material instance the tri planner projection is turned on so if you want to mitigate the stretching i would recommend to just use it and now let's head back to shortly discussing a procedural foliage system the example of a fantasy scene showcases how the fractal toolkit uses the procedural foliage system allowing you to quickly and effortlessly generate entire fractal forests so this is our scene and we have a, I would say a middle size terrain, it's 2 by 2 kilometers. And by the way, all of those distant meshes, those mountains, um, the fog cards, the sky panorama, the grass, the effects like uh, those fireflies over here. And basically everything that you see, all the assets, all the extra assets are included in the pack. So this is a little bonus for you. So let me show you how to use the procedural foliage system. First thing, we need to make sure that in the editor preferences, so edit and then editor preferences, and in the search bar, if we type procedural, we have this foliage tab, so we need to make sure we check it true. And that's it. Now, if we open up the place actors panel, and then if we type procedural, now we have access to the procedural foliage volume. And basically, all that you have to do to use it, let's first delete the existing one. So let's go to our Place Actors panel. Let's type again Procedural. And all we have to do is to drag and drop it onto our scene. Then let's expand the Details panel to access the scale. And let's type 1000 by 1000. And let's say 200 on height. Now the position the foliage volume to encompass the whole terrain, the whole landscape. Or just the part of the landscape. But in this case I'm gonna plant the trees everywhere. Trees and mushrooms. Trees and mushrooms. Now let's open up the details panel and scroll down until you'll see the foliage spawner and then we will choose the fractal forest so this is procedural foliage spawner and just hit or simulate and give them a real few seconds okay so we have our trees nicely placed and as you can see the procedural foliage volume is respecting the angle of the terrain so that we don't have uh, trees on slopes and things like that So that's that and uh, let's take a look just quickly at our procedural foliage spawner. Let's expand it. So inside you'll see uh, static meshes foliages for the mushrooms, trees and as well as this kind of a rocky slash mushroomy slash 
plant like something <laughs> is a very scientific description so we can adjust a bunch of different settings like a density a scale growth of the trees in the clusters and things like that and i'm not gonna explain all of those settings in this video but just to demonstrate you just to show you there's one little thing is that if we expand the clustering tab and increase the seeds per step or number of steps as well as seed density initial seed density basically all of those settings are the adjustments of the density as well as the density of packets or clusters of trees so let's increase seeds per step to maybe six and initial seed density let's say 0.6 let's save it and go back to details panel and hit resimulate and we should get the more dense forest all right that looks that looks interesting you know so let's have some fun and jump in so this is how the scene looks from the perspective of the player here we are in this very dreamy very unusual trippy world and I increase the density only of one type of a tree so right now the forest looks a little bit boring a little bit uniform yeah it's too boring but you get the point point. and I don't want to make this video too long for you so that the content is more digestible for you but just to give you some idea how you can use the procedural foliage spawner to automate your creation process so there you have it, the features of the Fractal Toolkit explained. My name is Michal Sornat and I am the founder of Ucreate. And let me remind you once again that what you have just saw are just a few examples of the many possibilities that this pack has to offer. So I'm very curious what you'll do with it and how you will enhance your own projects with Fractal Toolkit. And please like and subscribe and all of that YouTube stuff to support the channel. And until next time, happy creating. Cheers guys.